Hello, everyone. My name is Jordan Caldwell, and I'm the Instructional Technology Specialist for Hickory Public Schools. And this session of NC Bold is Lights, Camera, Action, and Introduction to Student Video Creation. We have a link to the presentation that will include links throughout to uh, tons of resources, tutorials, things of that nature, uh, link to the presentation down at the bottom left-hand corner, as well as a QR code you can scan that will take you there. So let's dive in and get started. First, let's talk about where student video creation fits in um, to some of the standards in North Carolina. So the Digital Learning Standards for Teachers, the DLCs, um, this falls under the Digital Content and Instruction strand. Also, the Digital Learning Standards for Students, Student video creation creates an opportunity for students to be empowered learners, knowledge constructors, creative communicators, and global collaborators. Next, let's look at why student video creation is important. It's important for several reasons. First of all, it transforms students from digital consumers to digital creators. Students consume media all day long, but this allows an opportunity for students to create their own digital content and publish it for others to see. It's also an opportunity for students to manage their own learning. Student video creation, it can take place anywhere in the learning process and students can do it at their own time and place in the learning process. It also creates an opportunity for student voice and choice. Students have choices in the video that they are creating. Uh, they have creative choices that they can make. They can make choices in terms of video and audio quality and content. It just allows them the opportunity to have a little bit more autonomy in the product that they are creating and submitting to demonstrate mastery of our content. It's also engaging. Students have fun doing it, and it's a lot more entertaining for a student to make a video instead of just completing a traditional paper pencil worksheet. Student video creation is also important because it builds off of students' current interest in video creation and some of the digital culture that they are a part of in their day-to-day -day personal lives. If you ask any elementary age student, what they want to do when they grow up, a big response you'll get from a large number of them is they want to be a YouTuber or they want to uh, be a video game streamer. That is video creation. And so by building off their current interest, we can leverage that to our ability in our day-to-day -day instruction. And lastly, it is a very important strategy because it teaches students marketable skill. By becoming a digital creator of video, that is a skill that is marketable out in the real world and can set students up for success as they enter the workforce. When getting started with video creation with your students, there's a few things to consider before you dive in. Ask yourself, one, where does this fit into my instruction? Be intentional about it in the instructional design process. Two, Devices, what do I have available? What do my students have available to record on? Next, when they record, what programs or apps or tools am I going to have them use on those devices? Are they going to edit it internally in an app or are they going to uh, use some type of other editing program to put videos, final product videos together? And lastly, what can I do in my classroom to improve the quality of videos students can create. So first, ask yourself, where does this fit into my instruction? Where do I plug this into my lesson plan? Well, there are different types of student created videos, so we'll take a look at those briefly right now. If you're looking for a more in-depth article to where you can learn more about these different types of videos that we're going to discuss, I have linked out an article uh, 
from Edutopia about student created videos in the classroom. And it outlines these four types of student video classifications that there are. The first is a learning product video. This is where students will demonstrate their learning or mastery of the content. Think of a big culminating project for a lesson, a unit of study, or a course. The next is a response video. That's just a quick, brief snapshot video that's in response to a prompt or a question. Think of a discussion board only using video as that method to discuss. The next is a reflection video. That's where students reflect on the learning process, offer insight into, the, uh, into um, what was going on while they were learning. And the last is a tutorial video. That The purpose of that is for the student to inform others about a topic or out about a, the process to complete a task. At the very end of the presentation, I have some additional resources linked out and I've included some sample rubrics and instruction templates that you can utilize when you start to implement these from scratch as you're getting video creation off the ground in your classroom. Next, we'll look at the different types of devices that are available in classrooms and how they can be used to record videos. The great thing about video content now in the classroom is it can be done using any common student or teacher device we have available in, mo in most classrooms across the, uh, the state. And so with that, we no longer have to rely on those designated video recording devices, just a camera um, or video recorder. It can be done by devices that are readily available. We'll look at some of the advantages of each different type of device and talk about the different types of devices that can be used. One of the more common devices we see in classrooms uh, today are Chromebooks. With those, most have just a front-facing camera looking directly at the person using the device. Some of the newer models, however, are starting to build in both a front and rear-facing camera option, which increases the capacity and options for using those devices to record video. Not only do they record what's uh, looking at the screen, but you can record what's on the other side and what the, the student is looking at. Quality with these a lot of times depends on the age of the model. Some of the newer Chromebooks have better quality cameras, so they will shoot in a better resolution. The older Chromebooks, the cameras may not be as great, but one great thing about them is you can easily integrate a higher quality uh, webcam. Uh, plug it in via USB, and then you can use that, that camera on the Chromebook to get a little bit better quality. One of the more popular options right now for classrooms to record video is an iPad. iPads or any type of tablet, they have that front and rear facing camera so students can um, record themselves uh, in selfie mode or record what's in front of them. Again, quality oftentimes depends on the age and the model of the iPad. The newer iPads and iPad Pros do have great quality video and can shoot in amazing high def. Uh, they are easy. Another advantage of iPads, they're easy to edit the videos on using iMovie, which is, uh, which is built into the iPads. One disadvantage, though, is the videos that are recorded on iPads they are uh, saved in a .mov file, and that can create some compatibility issues if you intend on students uploading it to certain tools or editing the video in certain tools that are not Apple specific. Again, you may run into some issues with uh, app compatibility on the iPads for older models. So things that uh, some of the older iPads that don't update past a certain iOS, you can run into some compatibility issues there. But overall, iPad is going to be your best option for that high quality resolution for student video creation, utilizing devices that are already accessible inside of classrooms. 
And then another great option is just the traditional standard cell phone. A lot of the new cell phones have great cameras on them that can capture video in high def. Um, a lot of students, especially middle grades and up, do have these. You always want to have devices available for students who uh, don't have their own personal device due to um, issues with equity in the classroom. But cell phones, again, similar to the iPads, they have a front and rear facing camera. Quality can depend on the age and the model, but great for students to record on and they can even do it outside of school at home. Next, we'll look at some popular apps, tools, and programs that you can utilize in your classroom for student video creation. When selecting a tool or program, be sure to pick an appropriate program or tool for the type of video you're wanting students to create. It doesn't need to be a big, full-on Hollywood production for something as short and simple as a response video or a reflection video, but a culminating video project for an entire unit of study, you may want to use the full-on production uh, methods of creating a video using a, dev a portable device and using some type of additional video editing software outside of traditional tools. But there are some tools that are great for the short response videos and reflection videos that students make as quick uh, examples of their learning and uh, as part of the learning process. It's also key to select an age appropriate program or tool for students to be using. Um, full on video editing in iMovie may not be the best option for a kindergartner. And if there's a tool that they're already using and familiar with and comfortable with, that might be a better option or alternative for their student created video. So we'll take a look at a few of those options now and talk about where they fit in. These are three commonly used tools in classrooms. Um, each one has it serves its own purpose, has its own features, and we'll take a look at them and talk about where they would fall in student video creation. Real quick, Flipgrid, I promote that for um, middle and high school age students, even though it can be used across all grade levels. Reason I like it for those grade levels, it has that Snapchat, Instagram, social media type feel. Um, that students are already accustomed to. So it gives uh, them, it plays off their interest into current things that they're doing with their devices at home in their free time. I also like Flipgrid because those districts that use Canvas, it has a Canvas integration where you can make a Flipgrid activity and assignment. Um, it also integrates with Google Classroom. Uh, another great advantage of it, it has an augmented reality option, which is great for an interactive uh, kinesthetic feel to this as well, because you can use that augmented reality option within Flipgrid for students cre to create videos, but then turn it into a digital gallery walk. The next one, Seesaw, it's another great app. A lot of um, elementary uh, teachers use this with students for uh, video and image portfolios that students create. Um, it does integrate with Google Classroom for those that use Google Classroom. Even though it's uh, popular in elementary grades, it can be used with students of any age, just like Flipgrid. The great thing about it and an advantage of it, you can preload assignments to it. Um, you can take an image or an infograph that's already uh, there, assign it out to all students, and then they then manipulate that content uh, by creating their own video. So that's an advantage that it has. Another great tool that, uh, that I advocate for schools that are already using Class Dojo for the student behavior monitoring piece and parent communication. Class Dojo has a portfolio feature where students can go in and they can create videos um, similar to what you see over in Seesaw. But the great thing about it is students are already using it. Parents are already connected to it. So it's almost a one app fits all purposes type of uh, scenario in terms of student video creation. So each of these has its advantage. Um, really think about what age um, and ability level your students have when picking one out. 
and just know that there's no right or wrong answer. It's all about which one suits your classroom, your uh, students, and your activities that you're planning the best. These three are great for those response videos where students are responding to a prompt, a question, an assignment, um, or those reflection videos where students are giving insight into their own learning process. To learn more about those tools, I have linked out on this slide um, some getting started resources for each program. There is the Getting Started with Flipgrid Guide through Flipgrid, uh, Seesaw uh, Training for Teachers, their site, and then the Class Dojo Learning Series has an element in there on the student portfolio submission. In addition to those options, there are some additional uh, options for recording that I did want to share. Uh, students, they can use the built-in cameras on any device to record a raw video. If they are using a Chromebook, one of the downsides to that is there's no built-in video editing software like we see on iOS devices with iMovie and Windows devices with Windows Video Editor. Um, Recently, I came across Video Candy, which is a site I have it linked here, and it is completely web based. So it works on all devices, cell phones, um, tablets, works on Windows devices and even Chromebooks. Because it is web based, students can edit a video file that they have saved on their uh, on a flash drive in their Google Drive, they can take it, put it into Video Candy, and trim it, add transitions, um, add slide title slides in between video clips. It is a very basic video editor, but it gets the job done and does grant that access on Chromebooks. Another option for any district that is currently using Canvas is you can create media recording assignment submission types in Canvas. Um, with this option, students can record directly into Canvas, um, respond to that assignment, and they have the option to either record the media directly within Canvas. Um, it opens up, a, they allow access to their camera and microphone. It opens up and allows them to record there inside of Canvas and submit it, or they can take something that they have pre-recorded um, or recorded on another device and upload that media through the upload media option. In order to access that, when you go to create an assignment under submission types, you would just select media recording as your option. And that is what will allow student video submission inside of a Canvas assignment. A few other apps, programs, and tools to kind of consider when looking into uh, video creation and sharing this with students. If you're using iPads or any type of Mac product, iMovie is definitely going to be a great asset to you. Um, one great thing about it, it does have a built-in green screen uh, editor for some of those more advanced flashy video features if you are looking for that. If you're not familiar with what a green screen is, it's the uh, technology behind some of the Hollywood action where um, someone is in front of a green screen and then that piece of the video is recorded and they can then take that video, remove that green background and put that image in front of another video or still picture scene. Another option uh, other than video candy that I wanted to share with you that I already mentioned previously to edit video is this one unscreen.com. What it does is it removes the background from a pre-recorded video. So say I already have a video and I want to add in a backdrop of a scene from a picture, but I didn't record it using a green screen. Unscreen allows you to take that pre-existing video. It removes the background behind the person in the forefront or the object in the forefront. And what it does is it then allows you to customize whatever background you'd like to put behind what is being recorded. And then something to always consider, Google Drive as a great place to store and share video content. Um, I do like to mention it because most educator accounts do have the unlimited uh, Google Drive storage. Um, so it is a great way to store and share some of those large video files or temporary, temporarily house them. 
And lastly, let's talk a little bit about video quality. Video quality is very important because we want students to create, uh, we want students to have ownership in the videos that they're creating. And we want them to be proud of the work that they're doing. So finding ways to increase uh, the quality of both the audio and video in their video projects is going to be important into them taking pride in their work. So how to make a better looking and sounding video. There are some simple things that you can do, some free, some paid to uh, create an environment where students can create better quality videos. The first is the quality of the camera is the primary means of increasing image quality. If you're using a device that has um, a poor camera on it, so a very, very old Chromebook or one of the early iPads where the image just isn't as sharp or clear. You can always integrate in a webcam if you have one uh, to that. The USB webcams, you can plug them directly into a Chromebook, and sometimes those have a better microphone in them as well as a better camera, so you'll get a better quality video recording. Something that you can do to make a video a little bit better without adding anything in um, to the computer device components is to look at lighting solutions. Anything from the small little ring lights that you can get on Amazon all the way up to full on lighting rigs and video uh, backdrop rigs that you can purchase um, or many schools already have um, as part of like a school news program. If you talk to uh, uh, whoever's running that program at your school, see if you could borrow it for your class. And oftentimes they're more than glad to lend that equipment out. Another thing that you can do to increase the image quality in student created videos is to find solutions for camera stability. Um, if students are using a Chromebook or a laptop, those typically sit on a desk, so they're not going to be moving around. But specifically for things like an iPad or a cell phone, finding some type of mounting solution, whether it be a tripod mount um, or something for students to prop, think, prop a phone or an iPad up on to keep it still is going to really help with image stability in the video. Next, audio quality. A lot of times, very similar to the quality of the camera, the microphone is built into the device, so there's not much you can do to change that. But you can add in other components, um, like an external USB microphone or the microphone from a webcam if you're utilizing that. One example of a USB microphone that I have, this is one that I currently use. It is the Blue Yeti. Blue is the brand name and Yeti is the model. It gives a much better quality audio sound to your video, um, which does make it easier for us as the teacher to understand what students are saying whenever they are creating those videos. Another thing that teachers can do is find solutions for background noise. When you have 30 students in a classroom, 30 or more students in a classroom, let me say, it can create a lot of background noise if everybody's trying to record at the same time. Utilize spaces throughout your building. As long as lunch isn't going on, maybe see if you can use the cafeteria to go and uh, space students out or allow students to go and record outside or in the hallway. Um, another option, uh, for this is to uh, create portable recording studios for your classroom. And I've got an example I'll show you on the next slide of what I mean by that. And lastly, editing methods. Um, is there any video quality degradation in the programs you're using? Sometimes if you're using an app, it, if your camera allows up to 4K video quality, some programs, if you're uploading a video into it, don't accept that high quality, so it may downgrade it to under high def resolution. Um, another thing you can do with editing, um, make sure you're using those editing programs and all the features that are built into some of those tools that I mentioned previously, because that will end up giving students more options, um, more voice and choice in the final product that they turn into you. 
These are some equipment ideas if you're uh, looking for um, any opportunities to bring this into your classroom and acquire funding, whether it be through donors choose or through other grant sources, um, either in your district or grants that are available through um, out um, on the web. Make sure um, before you go buying things, I always advocate check with your school media specialist, librarian, um, tech person in your building, because some of these things are just in the back room available and they just never get checked out. So before you go buying things, writing grants, check to see if any of these things are available in your building. Um, they may already exist there and they're just not being utilized and you can bring them into your classroom free of charge. So a few things I want to highlight here. These are some of the popular USB microphones um, that are out there um, in the resources I have on the last slide. I will link out some of the products that I personally use and I'm a big fan of. So you don't have to go uh, do a bunch of shopping on your own. I'll give you links to where I purchased all my stuff that I use. Um, but these are just some of the different makes and models. Um, they come at various price points, anywhere from the $20 to $30 range, all the way up into the $400 range. It just depends on what type of video experience you're trying to create for your students and what funding sources are available. Um, I do recommend if you are having students use uh, either phones or tablets or iPads to record on, try and uh, finding funding sources to invest into some type of mount or tripod, whether it be a tall floor stand one, one that is on wheels and can be moved around, or even they make little tabletop tripod stands for phones and tablets. If you're looking for any type of lighting solution, the ring lights that are available um, are a very cheap solution. If you're looking to upgrade it to get a much better quality and also bring in some of that green screen technology, a lighting rig similar to this is what I use. It does have a green backdrop so you can do green screen videos. Um, it also comes with a blank white backdrop that you can sub out or a black backdrop that you can sub out as well as the clip to attach them to the mount um, and four separate light, uh, sets of lights. And then a quick, simple STEM project you can do in your classroom, do during homeroom, collaborate with, uh, with an art teacher on, um, is making these DIY voice, voice recording boxes. It's almost like a little portable uh, recording studio for every student in your class. Get people to bring in boxes, talk to your custodian, uh, custodial staff, see if they can get you some boxes from around the building, can be any size. And then you can uh, oftentimes find uh, some of these and things that have been packed up um, and shipped to you. Um, or you can order uh, these foam pads off of Amazon and then glue them to the inside of the box to make a little voice recording studio. If you're looking for a completely free option, if you can get the boxes, talk to parents, have send students home with a list, tell them all to bring in any empty egg cartons that they have, you can then take those, cut them apart, and line the inside of the box with those for a completely free solution that helps out. Where this benefits from when you have 30 kids in a class recording, you have noise, background noise coming from all different directions. What this does is it isolates the direction of the sound to where the noise that is being picked up uh, by the microphone is coming directionally from the student doing the recording. And so it does help reduce, it doesn't completely eliminate, but it does help reduce some of that um, background noise if you need to have all the students there in the classroom and they can't go work out in the hall to record in a quiet space. Now, it's time for you to explore and practice a little bit. Uh, so with the time remaining, take about 15 or 20 minutes. And what I would like for you to do is read this Edutopia article that I mentioned earlier on about student-created videos in the classroom. It goes through a little bit of background knowledge and then walks you through those four types of student video classifications. After that, brainstorm a little bit. How can I use video in my classroom? What lessons does it 
fit in with? Um, do I want to make this kind of a daily ticket out the door reflection video that students start utilizing? How can I get funding to purchase some of those items that I just showed you? Um, brainstorm on those, those ideas after reading the article. And then pick one of the three apps or tools that provide an option for student video creation that we looked at and take time to experience them as a student. I want you to create your own video using whichever tool you are wanting to explore more, get to be the student, and then make a video based off of what you thought about and wrote down in your brainstorming session. I've also at the bottom, there will be a link to some resources that uh, will take you to, like I said, that shopping list. Also some resources to some uh, professional development sites on Flipgrid, Seesaw, and Class Dojo. some of their resources they have for teachers, as well as a few other goodies that I've tucked away for you there. So thank you for uh, coming to this session today and taking time to watch this. And I hope uh, you found the information valuable.